actually quite short. We have uh, five tools, meaning that we have five presentations, ten minutes, time slots. We will strictly try to keep to that time slot and all signal for the two minute deadline, basically. Uh, I will allow for one single question for each tool, which will be assigned on first come, first serve uh, principle. Uh, so the question should be very general to highlight some of the features of the tool. So that's a teaser for people to go uh, out and continue discussing uh, discussion at the tools until we go to the social event. Okay, so first presentation is by Christian Knight from the University of Tübingen. And the stage is yours. Okay. Hello, my name is Christian Knight. <laughs> it's okay, me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm an employee of Science and Computing AG and a former student of the University of Tübingen. Science and Computing uh, is an IT service provider, mostly for the automotive sector. In my case, I'm uh, working for Daimler and support and administrate the life cycle of cluster. So, um, and I'm going to show you, uh, as it, it's written down, an open source based framework for the Tübingen So. Uh, I would like to give you a brief a background about the Tunibet for those of you who did not know about it. Uh, it's a state of, it's a connect, interconnect for uh, clusters, for high performance clusters. And if you look at the top 500 um, of the most powerful supercomputer clusters in the world, you will see that most of the interconnects are Infiniband based. Uh, it's very expensive, that's why you don't have it in your in your uh, cellular or um, you don't have it if you don't need it. Uh, it's point-to-point, uh, -point, bidirectional, so um, yeah, you have switches and you have network channel adapters and um, yeah, cables. The protocol is completely implemented in hardware, so uh, you have an API on the driver that says, okay, I want to send this data from here to there and uh, the rest is done in hardware. So that's why it's very low latency in the nanoseconds and um, it's given high bandwidth. So uh, the actual standard is QDR, it's 40 gigabits per second. And the next one which will be deployed this year uh, is FTR, it's uh, 56 gigabits per second. You have one entity in the whole network which does a uh, network Administration which gives uh, the addresses like IP addresses in TCP IP and uh, done the and does the network routing uh, calculation and deploys the routing information to every switch. So every switch is very dumb as so as to speak. It does only have a table which is a destination and my the local port. So it comes packaged. It says, okay, I want to reach this destination, then it looks what port should I use to route it, and then it will respond. So, no um, big workload for the switch. And it works on copper and fiber, so for small destinations, we use copper and uh, fiber for the destination. Uh, InfiniBand, so the motivation uh, is that normally InfiniBand just works. It's, uh, as I said, very expensive, and therefore it's very. Uh, it works good normally, and if you have uh, small networks, um, you plug it in, and the whole uh, setup, the whole configuration is done initially. That you don't have to do anything. So normally you just use it. But if you have problems, uh, maybe a link is broken, or a cable is uh, has troubles, or a port has troubles, it's hard to debug um, whether where, where the problem really is. Is it the link? Is it the port? Is it the application? Because you, you have a rich toolbox, a lot of tools, you can uh, fire up and um, look at performance counters or look at uh, topology. But um, you have to, to um, figure out the whole network to, to say that's a performance problem of the cable or uh, anything. So uh, that's why it's, it's hard to debug and you have to have a basic or a good knowledge of the feedback. Um, further on, the IP, uh, IP topology is not that intuitive because if you have bigger switches, the switches are networks in a network. So a big switch uh, has modules um, which are basically switches.
switches within the big switch and therefore, and this is presented by the topology. So um, if you look at the topology, you will see lots of switches, but you can't um, map it to the real hardware you have in your, um, in your rack, or you can, but you have to know about it, and it's not intuitive for normal Ethernet guys who look at the infinity band like it's Ethernet. And the traffic flow, as I said, is hard to trace. You, you can't say this traffic on the switch comes from this uh, source and goes to, goes to the destination because it's all hardware. You can't uh, dig in um, the routing or the uh, uh, yeah, traffic information. So there's a need for an intuitive monitoring tool. Um, and that's what I have done in my thesis last year. And the 2.0 version is uh, represented by the paper here. Uh, that's the architecture, so uh, we have a couple of modules, like uh, the input, the topology is, re is, re is, um, is given by the toolbox, there's a command which gives you a text file with the topology information, and this is what I um, parse with the first left um, discover tool for the topology, and the performance counters are collected by the entity uh, with makes uh, all the routing um, calculations and uh, it has a plugin architecture that you can um, probe all, all uh, ports in the network to give you the, the performance information. And this is done every couple of seconds and this information about the performance of every port is um, written into a database. Uh, then we calculate the port utilization um, and traffic share as you will see in the last slide and the output or the all the information is shown uh, in maps and graphs about the performance and this is also shown on the last slide um, as I said it's very expensive so you don't have the um, experimental setup in your uh, in your room so you have a need for a simulation of the Philly band and uh, the good thing, or lucky me, we, is, there is an IDSIM called uh, Simulator for, um, for InfiniBand. You can give him a topology and uh, it will simulate the topology. And I have written a small GUI for it, so you can unplug the virtual nodes and uh, unplug switches and all the other nodes will, will be gone. And if you click it again, it's, it's uh, again in your topology. And what this IBSIM is doing is uh, it simulates the uh, infiniband network on the uh, card and all the all the topology connected to it. Yeah, and uh, simulation is one part, but uh, it has some drawbacks. You can't uh, simulate performance uh, data, and um, you can't s simulate that the link is failing. It's just a note. That you get out of the topology. So we have the need for, uh, to show the, the, the whole um, monitoring tool, we have the need for hardware, so we brought a small rack with um, eight servers and two infinite switches, and this is what you can hear outside. Um, yeah, it shows the performance measurements. So the scenarios I will skip, and we will show it after this presentation, and then uh, you can see it there. A small glance um, of the tool, it's uh, there on the left upper side, you see the topology with the topology information. The EMVs are servers, and the two nodes in the middle are switches, as you can imagine. And the, uh, the, the color of the switches <coughs> indicates um, how local the traffic is. If all the three nodes uh, on the bottom only um, only are connected or only are firing data to each other, then the this oh, is yeah. um, this link will not be utilized because all the traffic goes uh, is still on the switch, so um, you don't have trouble on the uplink side. And if the, all the traffic goes up to another node here on the other switch. The uh, link here in the middle should be very powerful to connect all or connect all the data and use the full bandwidth. So, if the uh, 
switch is red, then the uh, traffic um, should be um, global. So the traffic here is very red, red, so the traffic will pass to the other switch and then it's distributed to the other nodes. Thank <laughs> you.